morning students today we are going to start with the next unit unit number 7 which is basic abap language elements and in this unit we will learn about the three lessons the first one is defining elementary data objects second using basic abap statements that means we will learn about the number of basic abap statements in this lesson and in the lesson number 3 we will discuss about how the debugger sap debugger works so let us we start with the lesson number one so defining elementary data objects so before uh, proceeding on to this data object just i want to tell you what is variable a variable is the name given to some memory location and what is data type the type of a variable or constant is known as a data type so this data objects when we talk about this data objects that means we are going to define the type of data objects with the technical properties that means we are going to define the variables using the data type so how we can define the data object generally and how we can use that data object so it is representing this slightly representing where we use where we can use this data types so the data type can be used to define the data objects for definition of input output fields to define the interface parameters so interface parameters generally we have importing parameter and exporting parameters for defining your input output and fields the def definition of the data objects and defining the typing of the interface parameters so generally parameters we use in case of a subroutine or methods the so subroutine is also called a function and function module you can say that and this is called function module there are collection of number of function modules and this is called function group so each of the function group contain the number of function modules and each of the function modules have the number of interfaces sometimes the interfaces are also called parameters so these parameters we can define using the data types now when we will talk about this uh, data types we have generally two types of data types that is first one is predefined and second is user defined and in case of a predefined or sometimes we call it as a standard data types so predefined data type is also called standard data types it is two categories subcategories that is your complete and incomplete so complete ABAP standard data types are date time integer floating string x string decimal float 16 and decimal float 34 so first data type that is your date and this type for date is D and format is YY, YY, MM and DD and its length is fixed so that's why it is called complete, complete ABAP standard data types. Next is type for the time that is T, format is HS that is hours, MM that is minutes and SS that is your seconds and length is 6 that is your fixed length. Next is integer, that is type for integer, its length is fixed, that is length 4 and fixed. Next is float, type for floating point numbers, that is f and the length is 8 and it is also fixed. Next is string, type for dynamic length character strings and x string, that is your dynamic for, uh, we can use for, this is for hexadecimal strings, for representing hexadecimal string. And the most important is decimal float 16. Suppose if you want to represent your uh, number into the floating point numbers decimal point numbers then we use two types of complete ABAP standard data type the first one is decimal float 16 DEC float 16 and decimal float 34 so first is decimal float 16 that is type for saving is decimal floating point numbers with a many tissue and exponent and the length is 8 bytes with the 16 decimal places so here the 16 term representing that you can represent your number decimal number up to 16 decimal places and it is also fixed that's why it is called complete ABAP standard data types next is decimal float 34 and the type for saving decimal floating point number with the many and exponent length is 16 byte with 34 decimal plus places so this 34 is representing your up to 34 decimal places now when we will talk about the second standard data type is called incomplete so incomplete data types are character, numeric, hexadecimal string and packed number. C for type for character string that is the character for which the length is to be specified. We need to specify the length here. So that's why it is called incomplete. 
every time when we will declare a particular variable using c then we need to specify the length using the length addition and uh, that means the length we need to specify here so that's why it is called incomplete second is numeric type for numerical character string that is numerical character for which the length is to be specified x type for the byte sequence hexadecimal string for which the length is to be specified and the last is p that is a pack number if you want to represent decimal numbers using incomplete type so we can use pack number for which the length is to be specified the number of decimal point may also be specified now come to the next topic declaring local types so first of all declaring local types that means you can also define the user types how we can define using standard data types you can declare the local data types in the program a web program that can be the more complete or more complex than the standard data types how we can declare with the help of a type statements we need to use the types so in this example program you can see that this report is representing your the program starting so this is the declaration of the local data type so this is types gty underscore c underscore type and the type is c length is 8 here we are specifying the length so this type c is a incomplete similarly types gty underscore n underscore type type is n that is numeric and the length is 5 so again we are uh, specifying the length so it is again the incomplete type so we are defining a particular type user defined type the name of this type may be anything so similarly the types gty underscore p underscore type type is pack number length is 3 and decimals is 2 so this represent a particular variable which may contains the decimal number with the length is 3 and decimal is 2 come to the next type and that is called global type so this was the local type the local types are the types by which we can define the variables into the local program that is your ABAP programs. Second is global data types and global data types we define generally in the ABAP dictionary. A data type specified or defined in the ABAP dictionary is called global types as it can be used throughout the entire SAP systems. So it can be used throughout the entire SAP system. So once you have defined the global types, it can be accessible in any programs, it can be accessible into any function modules and so on. Now come to the next topic, defining the data objects. How we can define the data? As I have already told you, the data objects are nothing that are the variables. So how we can define the data objects with the help of either local type, this is the local type, gty underscore type, either using the global types. So this is an example and in this example you can see that the local and global types can be used to define the variables or you can say that data objects and data objects are always defined with the data keyword. The point to be noted here that is the data objects are always defined with the data keyword and we can define the any variable or data object with the help of local types that is your type statement local types either with the global types or either using the predefined standard types and we have the two types of standard type that is complete and incomplete types so in the next slide you will see in an example so this is an example of defining the elementary data objects the first of all we are going to define types gty underscore percentage type p length 3 decimal 2 so it is representing gty underscore percentage is a local type now we are going to define the data object variable first variable gv underscore percentage one then type gty underscore percentage so gty underscore percentage is our local type now we are moving on to the next variable or data object that is gv underscore percentage two type is gty underscore percentage so we are defining these two variables or two data objects using the local type that is gty underscore percentage Next, we are moving on to the next data object that is gv underscore number one. Type is i and value is 70. So type i is our standard type, standard complete type. But we are making it constant. How we can make it constant with, with the help of value addition. So this is the value addition 17. So this variable number gv underscore number one will automatically contain default value will be 17. gv underscore number two, we can use the like addition. If you don't want to define the type here you can just use the 
variable name so if you will take the variable name it will take the type of this variable name automatically to this variable so gv underscore number two will have the same type as that of with gv underscore number one by using the like addition next is gv underscore ct type c length 15 so this is type c means that is incomplete standard type and we have to be lengthy to specify it so it is an incomplete standard type next is gv underscore char id type s underscore char underscore id so you can see that it is taken from the dictionary so it is representing from the dictionary similarly gv underscore connection id type is s underscore connection id now let us be see uh, this the memory part and in this case of memory part you can see that this is gv underscore percentage one so we have defined the gv underscore percentage when the type is gty underscore percentage so its type is p back number and length is three and decimal is two so it will take five spaces zero 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 so it is taking total five spaces with the initial value is zero but it is positive number so it is uh, pl placing the sign here plus similarly gv underscore percentage two the type is same gty underscore percentage so you can see that that is 0, 0, 0 and plus. Now GV underscore number one, its type is integer and value is 17. Next is GV underscore number two. We are not defining the value here. So default value it will take zero. GV underscore CT, the type is C, character type and length is 15. So you can see that there are 15 boxes, 15 memory locations which are empty in this case. Next is gv underscore char id. This is a type s underscore char id or it may be any type which we have defined in the dictionary. So it is taking blank three spaces. gv underscore connection id. So it is type of s underscore connection id. It may are taking four digit number. So it is uh, representing here the default values. So the most important thing that uh, need to be focused in this slide is value addition and like addition. So you can use the value addition to pre-assign the value of an elementary data objects and like is used for representing getting the type from the another variable name. Now come to the next topic and that is literals and constants. And what are the literals? Then you will see this 17, 1715. These are the literals. So fixed data object have a fixed values that is defined when the source text is written and cannot be changed at the runtime. So literals as well as constants belong to the fixed data objects. So you can see that this is constant gg underscore uh, my constant type and then type name and we are uh, specifying the value here. So value is that means we are specifying my value 17. So 17 is a literal here. So this was all about the literals and constant and literal and constant belong to the fixed data objects. This constant is an optional you no need to be specify each every time you can just start directly gc underscore my constant and type and then type name then you can specify the value here directly now come to the next topic local versus global data types so generally what is what it is generally local means that means when we define a local type into the program then it becomes the local data type and when we are defining it into the dictionary it becomes the global type. So let us we start with the most important things as we have discussed it already. What are the local data types? What are the global data types? I just want to tell you about some important principles in ABAP development. That is ABAP is a multilingual capability. That means this means the Logan language of the current user is taken into account when the texts are displayed on the user interface. So multilingual capability of this uh, SAP ABAP is there that means if you are writing a program in English you can use it for the other language also so this was all about the lesson number one of the unit number seven